Wow. A lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion in this room. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. So the really nice thing is we have lines, and I want to thank Chase, and I want to thank Alan. In an embarrassing display, Donald Trump was booed and heckled at SneakerCon in Philadelphia. This is something I've been talking about for 12 years, 13 years, and I think it's going to be a big success. Your influencers have been very positive. They've been real influencers, and they love it, and they love what we've done. That's the real deal. The latest grift to supplement the RNC likely paying his bills involves shoes. Trump also made a stop at SneakerCon in Philadelphia where he unveiled a sneaker line. The gold Trump branded shoes were sold in limited supply for $399 a pair. Guy, Rachel and Pete. Mm. Thank you so much, Madeline. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Of course. I may or may not have gotten a pair for my wife. Don't tell I her. Know, I know. I'm, I'm just going to leave it as a teaser. <laughs> Trump TV, as they always do, gave the ridiculously priced kicks the stamp of approval. As one takes a look at this hideous design, the question arises, who is actually buying these? Well, here's a visual. This man at SneakerCon put in a bid for signed kicks from the former president. The bid, $9,000. This is their clientele, their fanboys, the diehards, the ones who per Trump will never lose their vote even if he shot someone on Fifth Avenue. These are his most loyal supporters, which by the way, speaking of, we turn to Alan Vinogradov, the co-founder of SneakerCon. Alan is a Trump loyalist, donating to Trump Save America Joint Fundraising Committee, Donald J. Trump for President 2024, Inc., and then a second donation to Trump Save America Joint Fundraising Committee and Donald J. Trump for President 2024, Inc. So when I see tweets such as these that read, heads up, Trump is coming to Philly on Saturday to speak at SneakerCon, an event largely attended by black and brown men, to the organizers who gave this man a platform to rant shame on you, well, now we know the source, don't we? Seeing as SneakerCon was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, pretty clear why Trump was there. From Politico in November 2020, in several of these states, the erosion was considerable. In Pennsylvania, President-elect Joe Joe Biden won young voters by a 20-point margin compared to Hillary Clinton's nine-point advantage in 2016. The writer, Gabby Orr, then lists a few other states Trump lagged behind, and she analyzed them. Thus, Penn Capital's John Cole wrote of Trump's appearance, in addition to promoting the launch of his sneaker line, Trump's speech appeared to be an attempt to court younger voters, who made up a significant majority of the audience. What's the most important thing, Trump asked, to go out and vote? Chase Young, founder of Culture Kick praised Trump prior to the former president speaking. Young described Trump as someone who would have a deep impact on the sneaker industry by becoming the first president to launch their own sneaker, clearly missing the point. Kurt Eichenwald, a longtime reporter and journalist, brought another angle to this charade from Donald Trump. He'd write on Twitter, nothing more fun than tracking down Trump's latest grift. For his sneakers, he's getting a fee paid to CIC Ventures, which he owns, by 45 Footwear LLC which is purportedly the shoe manufacturer that is based in Sheridan, Wyoming, in this rundown house in a grimy shopping mall. Adding, this is what you see when you turn the camera around to look on the other side of the parking lot. Here's some closing thoughts. First off, Google Sheridan, Wyoming money laundering, and you will see a Rolodex of businesses that appear to be partaking in this random small faction of the United States of America. It is odd, and we can even do a deep dive on the town's impact, but what I saw was shocking. After seeing the Kurt Eichenwald tweet, I, I just, it's so random, right? Like, I, I know, like, you know, uh, Wyoming is uh, conservative, but why that location? Why would Trump pick that location? Google it and come back to me. My closing thoughts are this. That's one. The second, I saw a tweet from Tommy Lauren saying, oh, it's such a great business move. It is just so amazing. He's so smart. Let's just dissect this, okay? There are some who are conservative in sneaker culture. What I will say, is sneaker culture has been completely hijacked by VCs and rich white kids of affluent parents who will take sneakers, buy them, re clean them and relist them, or hold on to them and then relist them again and make a profit. Buy shoes in bulk 
and sell them. I think sneaker culture has been completely hijacked the same way the sports card industry has been completely hijacked. There are some who got in years ago and made their impact and made their move. But at this point, it kind of fits the same demographic. Second, and we already stated it, Trump lost Pennsylvania bad with younger voters. Okay, so what's the best way to do this? Go to where they are, talk to them, try to relate to them. Did he? No. <laughs> The guy who says I'm the least racist person you've ever met. The least anti-Semitic person you've ever met. I, I, women, women love me. I am the most pro woman man you've ever met. That guy, he's not relatable. Him doing this with the gold shoes was literally an in to this marketplace. Financially, sure, they said that there's a limited supply, more so to their vote. Because in politics, everything is on the table. Every little nook and cranny of a subject, of a place, of an event, it doesn't matter. All of them, DNC, RNC, comms, teams, well, it doesn't matter. They think about how can we get as many votes as possible by looking into a vast subset of industries across the country and place our candidate there to go talk. You know, the, the cliche is shake hands, kiss babies, and try to convince people to vote for them, okay? When I look at these gold shoes, one person on Twitter said, oh, you're gonna cop those January 6s? <laughs> which was nice, but what I see is just another grift on top of many. And one of the most notable grifts was after January 6th, Trump needed to find a way to get more money because he was out of the oval. And what he did was he would send those emails like, oh, could you chip in $5? Could you chip in $25? And the New York Times went and interviewed those people who clicked on that link and donated because they thought, oh my God, he's the best president ever. I need to save him. I need to help him. When you don't, he has plenty of backing. And these people didn't realize that they weren't making a one-time donation, even though according to them, it said one-time donation and they clicked that box. It kept going over and over and over and over and over until this one dude noticed that his bank account was damn near dry. And when he went to look why and pull up the statements, he realized why. It was because they kept withdrawing money and this happened to many people. When we look at the infusion of cash for Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Ivanka Trump, what have you. I do find it rather odd that conservatives don't say, well, Jared Kushner got over $2 billion in the Saudis. Well, Donald Trump got richer. Well, Donald Trump is using our tax money to give an influx of cash to his failing business properties. Wow, that's interesting. He's hiking up the price for a round of golf and bevies and golf carts and stays in rooms at Trump hotels. And, and no one blinks an eye, at least on that side of the aisle, no one blinks an eye. Yet I digress. Let me go back to this. There was a report from Politico probably about six months ago, I'd say, where there was talk of how the Trump strategy is going to be unique, for lack of a better word. And the piece was on Politico, and they talked about how there's a rumor Donald Trump is going to do Mike Tyson's podcast, and he's going to do the Full Send podcast, and he's going to do all these different shows because back in the day, when it came to mainstream media, all that was was CBS. I mean, everybody knows this, 2, 5, 7, 9, 11, yada, yada. ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, CNN. Now, with the market being oversaturated, there are so many different audiences for a candidate to choose from if they wanted to go on said show. And how I view this is part of that strategy, that it doesn't have to come down to, oh, I gotta do a Fox News hit to get the conservative voters. He already knows, he has them in the back. He'll continue doing it, probably to fundraise, but it's in the bag. But going to SneakerCon, doing these different shows, what this displays is a completely different strategy going forward, mainly where they know they lost, which was younger voters. So how do they attempt to swing it? Let's just put two and two together here, guys, guys and gals. How do they attempt to swing it? They go on these shows that have younger demographics, plug the candidate, say something crazy, try his best to woo them, and they're banking on it, working out when it comes to the 2024 election. Real quick, if we missed anything, if there's anything that you would like to submit, if there are any stories, excuse me, that you think are worth covering, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. DMs are open. Thank you for watching.